This episode of the AT Tips Cast is sponsored by TextHelp Systems. TextHelp has moved Read and Write Gold support features to the cloud with a new suite of web apps. The web apps work within browsers on iPad, iPod Touch, iPhone, and other mobile devices, as well as PCs and Macs. The apps include Read and Write Web, which provides read aloud with dual color highlighting, along with dictionary, picture dictionary, translator, and study skills for HTML web content. Ebook Reader, which allows users to search for, download, save, and read aloud bookshare ebooks. Speech, which reads aloud typed or pasted text. And Dictionary, which provides text and image definitions for typed or pasted words. Call TextHelp at 1 888 248 0652. That's 1 888 248 0652. Or go to TextHelp.com for more information. Welcome to the AT Tips Cast, exploring and investigating the implementation of assistive technology in public schools. I'm your host, Chris Bouguet. This is episode number 85, recorded on December 1st, 2011. Dr. John Medina is a molecular biologist and the author of the book Brain Rules. He was recently the keynote presenter at the ISTE conference that took place earlier this year. I recently watched a video featuring Dr. Medina where he explains his brain rule number one, which is exercise boosts brain power. In the video, which follows both of my rules for video making, it's both short and entertaining, Dr. Medina explains that proteins that stimulate the brain are produced during exercise. He explains that having an environment where everyone is sitting around, unmoving, and sedate is exactly the opposite of what stimulates brain development. And of course, in traditional classrooms, this is exactly what students are doing, sitting around, unmoving, and sedate. This got me thinking, what are some ways to get students up and moving in the classroom? Likewise, I started thinking about what free or commonly found technologies could be used to increase the kinesthetic energy in a classroom, outside of recess and physical education classes. And that led me to AT Tips 230 through 232, which are all online, gesture-based games controlled via a webcam. Before I dive in describing these different games, I thought it might be a good idea to describe the setup. In order to use all of these games, you're going to need a few things. First, you're going to need a computer and a web camera, or webcam for short. Many laptops come with a built-in webcam. If your laptop or desktop doesn't have a built-in webcam, the next thing you can try is looking at different specifications of any digital camera you have access to. Some schools have digital cameras teachers can utilize, and some digital cameras have the functionality to double as webcams. Look up the model online, check out the manual for the camera, and see if you can get it to work. If all else fails, you could buy a plug-and-play web camera. If you don't have one, they're relatively inexpensive. You can usually find a quality webcam for under $20. If you're not familiar with the term plug-and-play, it just means that it doesn't require any software to run. Once your webcam is set up, you're good to go. Well, sorta. Most of these websites require Flash or Microsoft Silverlight in order to run. If you're not sure what that is or what those are, don't worry about it. Just try the website out and see if it works. In some instances, depending on the type of computer you're using, you might get a pop-up message asking you if you would like to allow the website to utilize your webcam. You're going to have to click Allow in order for the games to work. Once you've done that, you're good to go. Now, let's get our bodies moving. AT Tip number 230 is one of the games from the website of one of my family's favorite television shows, Wild Crafts. The show features two brothers, Chris and Martin Kratt, who are animal researchers who go on different adventures where they come in contact with a variety of wildlife. When they touch an animal, while they're wearing their creature power suits, their suits transform them, giving them the abilities of that animal. My kids love this show so much, we had to go explore the website over at pbskids.org slash wildkrats. While there, they played all the different animal adventure games, and one of them, Caracal Leap, 
allows the user an option to utilize a webcam to control the caracal. Which is sort of like a mountain lion, in case you were wondering. In the game, the user reaches out with their hands to grab birds that fly across the screen. When the person moves his or her hand over the bird, the caracal at the bottom of the screen leaps upward to grab it. Now, don't worry, it isn't as violent as it sounds. The caracal doesn't tear them apart or anything. After all, it's a kid's show. The caught birds simply disappear and are transformed into points. Users score points to unlock higher, more challenging levels. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Man, it doesn't show ET tip number 231 is perfect for winter, which we know is right around the corner. It's called Snow Sweepers, and of all the web camera games we've played so far, this is the one my kids kept asking to play over and over and over again. It's sort of strange because there isn't much to it. All you do is wipe away snow that has fallen on your screen. There's no score, there are no levels, all you do is clear the screen of snow. This game is particularly accessible because you can clear the screen with any body part. Users could use their hands, feet, or just their head to move around the screen to make the snow disappear. Now, if only there were just some way to make that work on real snow, we'd be all set. The Snow Sweeper game can be found at bit.ly slash snowsweeper. The Snow Sweeper game is actually just one of a few other games that you'll find over at AT tip number 232, playdocam.com. Playdocam.com has two other web games beyond Snow Sweeper. Iconoid is like the old school breakout game where you control two slider bars, one with each of your hands, to redirect a ball, or if you hit the right combination, multiple balls, in order to destroy bricks on the wall. Iconoid is a bit hard to control and might require some practice to get used to, but the other game on the site is loads of fun. It's called Play Do Jam, and it's a version of basketball played via webcam. Either individually or together in a pair, in either cooperative or competitive modes, people use their bodies to bounce a ball into a hoop. Users can headbutt the ball, hit it with their hands, or really any body part, just like with Snow Sweeper. The objective is to score baskets in the correct hoop while avoiding obstacles. Because of the different modes of play, you can have teams of students participate in a tournament, communicate ideas for strategy and passing, and work together to outscore their friends. Aw oh, man, that buzzer means we're all out of time, and I've still got a few other fun and innovative online gesture-based games to share. Uh, sadly, we're going to have to wait until next episode. But before I roll the music and head into the outro, I wanted to include some other things to think about while playing these games in a classroom. First, of course, these games are fun and engaging, but they can be so much more when you implement them as instructional tools to do activities such as predicting scores, graphing scores, using personal statistics in math activities, practicing time, and practicing the language of teamwork and strategy while working together to achieve a higher score or beat the game. Second, before playing these games, it's important to realize that they require gross motor movements. Students, depending on their age and abilities, might have arms flailing all over the place while playing, which could lead to injuries. An arm reaching for a virtual ball could land hard on a surface, object, or worse, a friend. So just be careful when playing these games to make sure that the immediate area around a student is clear of obstacles. Third, the games from PlayDoCam.com aren't played using the full screen and may be difficult to make larger without some third-party software. This same concern will apply to some of the games that will be discussed in the next episode. This might be difficult for some students with attention, low vision, or other concerns, so it's just something to be aware of. Finally, I'd add that these games can be strenuous. Unlike commercial gesture-based games, there isn't a warning reminding people to take a break if they need one, or to check with a doctor before starting an exercise program. These games require some mobility, they increase movement, and they change the environment kinesthetically. Keep medical concerns in mind before allowing a student to access these games. 
Now, once you've considered all that, go have some fun. Your students' brains are craving some movement. Go give it to them. If you'd like to watch the video starring Dr. Medina, where he describes exercise as a brain rule, I'll have it listed over at the blog, attipscast.wordpress.com. Likewise, I have screenshots I took of myself and my own kids playing these games posted on the blog as well. I think the screenshots will give you a good visual representation of what each game is all about. I think you'll see that your students will be engaged in gross motor activities that will stimulate their brains in such a way that they'll truly be active learners. Before I end the show, I wanted to remind everyone that I'll be at the VISTI conference next week. So if you're a listener to the show, or if you've read the Practical and Fun Guide to Assistive Technology in Public Schools, and you're going to be at the VISTI conference, you've got to hunt me down so we can connect. I'd love to meet you. Until next time, may all your interventions be inclusive, may all your strategies be supportive, and may you listen to all your podcasts while building up a sweat. <laughs>